Hey everyone, it's Gus from Pi My Life Up. Today I'm taking a look at the BeagleBone vs Raspberry Pi 2. If you're considering buying one of these, then hopefully this video will help you decide in which is best for you. Just to begin, I will briefly go into each of the devices and the main features of them. Later in the video, we'll take a look at how easy it is to get started, the difference in software and hardware, and the type of projects that are around for each device. Now, the Raspberry Pi is a small credit card sized computer that is able to run a range of Linux distributions. It features GPO pins, four USB ports, Ethernet, HDMI, audio out, and a few other hardware slots you can connect devices to. We'll go more into this in a bit. The Pi also requires an operating system in order to function. This is stored on an external micro SD card that will need to be connected to the Pi. The Pi also supports networking via wireless USB or over Ethernet. Now here we have the BeagleBone Black, and much like the Raspberry Pi, it's roughly about the size of a credit card. The BeagleBone, like the Pi, requires an operating system in order to function. This board, however, is shipped with an operating system already pre-installed on its internal memory. It also features a very large number of GPO pins, but only has one USB port. Now let's briefly touch on the difference between the hardware of the two devices. The Raspberry Pi features a 900MHz quad-core ARM processor, whilst the BeagleBone only has a 1GHz single-core processor. The BeagleBone also only has 512MB of RAM compared to the 1GB the Raspberry Pi 2 has. One of the biggest downsides to the BeagleBone is that it only has one USB port compared to the Pi's 4. This means a USB hub is a must if you plan on getting a BeagleBone and plan on using more than just one USB device. For example, even a mouse and keyboard will take up two USB ports. In terms of power connections, the Raspberry Pi can only draw power through the micro USB port. The BeagleBone on the other hand is able to draw power through both a micro USB port and a 5 volt DC connection. Now as you can clearly see, the BeagleBone has a lot more GPIO pins. Out of the 92 pins it has, 65 of these can be used as GPIO. The Pi still has 26 out of its 40 dedicated to GPI usage. So this will be plenty for most small projects that require these pins. Both the boards have quite a large range of add-on boards that can be used to extend the board's functionality. However, you will find the Pi has a much larger range due to the larger community backing it. Now let's talk about getting started. Setting up a BeagleBone Black is surprisingly easy. The board comes with 4GB of onboard memory and has been pre-installed with a Linux-based operating system, Angstrom. It also comes with a USB cable so you can just quickly hook it up and power the device. All you need to do to get it going is switch it on and you can start doing whatever you like. You probably still need to buy like a HDMI cable, keyboard, mouse, now, getting started with Raspberry Pi is a little more involved, since a lot of the required parts aren't actually sold with the Pi. This includes both the power supply and the SD card. You can buy an SD card with an operating system pre-installed on it. This will make it a little easier with getting started. Now let's talk about the difference in software and performance between the two devices. The Raspberry Pi at the time of this video still lacks any good Android port, which is a bit disappointing. However, you do have access to a lot of great Linux distributions such as Ubuntu Core, Raspbian, Ubuntu May, and a few others. The Pi 2 also supports Windows 10 IoT if you're interested in projects involved around that OS. Also since the Pi 2 has a quad-core CPU and 1GB of RAM, it is also able to run software packages a lot better than the BeagleBone. You will see improvements in performance over BeagleBone in areas such as media centers, emulators, web servers and much more. Now let's talk about the BeagleBone. The main operating systems you'll find for this device include Angstrom, this is the default pre-installed OS, Debian, Fedora, Android, 
Arc Linux and many others. As Angstrom is the default operating system you'll get the most support and the least problems using this one. Since the BeagleBone Black doesn't have nearly the same specs as what the Raspberry Pi 2 currently has, you'll find it falls a bit behind in terms of performance. You'll find that running most software packages will be a little bit slower. Both devices have a wide range of projects that you're able to do with them. I'll briefly give a few examples now and go into what you'd expect the community to be like around each device. The BeagleBone Black performs pretty well in projects that require access and usage of the GPIO pins. You can expect some pretty cool projects such as robotics, sensor logging, audio looper, lighting control, motion sensors and much more. It is also great for all the usual basic computer tasks such as email, word processing and much more. If you're looking for help, projects and guides for the BeagleBone, you'll find the forums and live chat over at the official website incredibly helpful. The community is a lot smaller than the Raspberry Pis but you'll find that there is still a lot of great projects and people to help you if you get into any trouble. Raspberry Pi does small hardware projects and software projects well. You can do some pretty cool projects such as retro game emulator, a web server, network attached storage, webcam server, motion sensing and much more. We'll have no trouble finding Raspberry Pi projects and help online. There is quite a large community of YouTubers, bloggers and also the official forums to get help project ideas and much more. Overall in terms of support and community, the Raspberry Pi has probably one of the largest communities out of all the microcomputers. With that said, you can still find plenty of help and advice on the BeagleBone. In terms of price, the BeagleBone Black sits at about roughly 50 US dollars. This will get you the board and a USB cable. This is all you need to be able to start using it. You'll probably still need to buy a HDMI cord and possibly a USB hub if you plan on using more than one USB port, such as a keyboard and mouse. The Raspberry Pi 2 sits at about 35 US dollars, but it also doesn't come with everything you need to be able to use it. Assuming you don't have anything, you'll need to buy a micro SD card and a power adapter to even just get the Pi running. You can find Raspberry Pi kits that contain everything you need to be able to get going at about 70 US dollars. In terms of price, both of them end up being about roughly the same price by the time you add up all the extra bits and pieces. The BeagleBone vs Raspberry Pi debate is a difficult one, as they're very similar in a lot of ways. However, there are a few defining points that will hopefully be able to make your mind up. I would personally pick the BeagleBone Black if I were looking into more device and circuitry based projects. The amount of GPIO pins available will make it amazing for extending the board's capability. It's also important to remember that this device is more than a year old now, and the Raspberry Pi 2 was only released this year. Now, I would personally pick the Raspberry Pi if I were looking into more software based projects or projects that didn't require a huge range of GPIO pins. I'm sure I probably missed something so if you think I should have mentioned something important please drop us a comment below or over at PyMyLifeUp.com. Also feel free to let us know your thoughts on the BeagleBone vs Raspberry Pi debate and why someone should go with one over the other. Click here if you want more information on both the Raspberry Pi and the BeagleBone or simply just head over to PyMyLifeUp.com If you like this video and would love to stay up to date with all our latest projects, guides and much more then please subscribe. Until next time, have a good one.